Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. And in today's video, we're going to be revisiting the EZI 2.0 monitor. And this is not going to be a review or anything like this. It's more going to be like a reference video. And mainly because while I have tried my best to do a good job with the uh, recording of the footage to be as faithful as possible, on an RLCD display like the ESI 2.0 is, there are two things that I noticed that I think needed kind of revisiting and warranted additional footage so that you guys can have as objective as I can possibly make representation of what it looks like to use an RLCD monitor. And the two problems are first, while I did lock down most of the settings on my camera, uh, I did not lock down the exposure. So as the day was, you know, getting cloudy or sunny or something like that, the aperture would open and close as well, which would allow more light to pass in. Now, in some respects, that's not really a bad thing because our eyes react much in the same way. The pupils expand and dilate. So that aspect was not that big of a deal, but I wanted to address that as well so that it's more clear uh, what the differences are when you have more light and less light on a display like this. But the most important one was basically the point of view. So while I tried to make the point of view to be as good as I could get it, it was still not the same thing as what I was seeing. And as a result, the camera would see reflections when I wouldn't, or I would see reflections when the camera wouldn't. And the most important aspect is that that basically distribution of light and illumination of the content of the screen was simply not the same. So that's why I'm making this video so that I can use this little dude strapped onto my forehead. And hopefully in this way, I'm able to capture and remedy these two things by, of course, locking the aperture on this little dude and um, yeah, strapping it to my head and recording the footage from my point of view. So that's the whole point of the video. And let's begin. Right, so objectively, you get to have a gorgeous day like this, and that's where an RLCD display is supposed to, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, shine, because there's no cloud in the sky, it just, yeah, birds are chirping, all that kind of stuff. Yes, we still have snow, I know. That's basically as good as it's gonna get as far as the environmental, outdoor environmental conditions are concerned. Let's check out the indoor conditions. This is the setup here. And as you can see, I have basically, yeah, full on windows to that side. And from the back side, there's more windows. So even from the indoor environmental conditions and setup, uh, it doesn't really get much better than this. This is the absolute best that I am able to give um yeah this type of technology so that it has a fair go and that we can see how it actually compares in reality to the alternatives all right so i've locked the exposure here and hopefully the view is going to be good i have tilted the rlcd at a pretty significant angle and this is something that's important to do because what you really want to do with an rlcd display in any environment is to rely on the bounced light if possible. The reason for that is that the bounce light is diffuse light and it is more equal, right? You don't get to have the like super sharp uh, reflections and things like that. And you don't get to have like really sharp differentiation between uh, directly lit and unlit sections of the screen, because that's not something that an RLCD screen is going to be happy with. If you do something like that, that's easiest way to do it is to angle it uh, downwards like this and then it just receives a more equal type of lighting conditions here so when you do have it set up like that here's my um yeah lcd panel ips on my laptop you can clearly see the difference here so for example yes this one is glowing but it, it only glows because if i don't turn it all the way up then it becomes completely invisible so no matter what you do 
under these conditions on my laptop, it's virtually impossible to get uh, pleasant and good reading results and experience. Whereas on an RLCD, that's where it truly yeah, shines and it gives you this really lovely, lovely reading experience. And it also, because of the tint and all of these kinds of things, you can see the glowing bluish white color of the white where we have this soft yellowish color of the white, which makes it um, yeah, much, much more pleasant for reading. The thing that I'm not such a fan of is basically the 1080p on this size of a panel. And you can definitely see that in some of the uh, fonts when you're reading, but you can actually just simply zoom in a little bit here. And then, yeah, as soon as the content is uh, bigger, then the resolution becomes uh, less of a problem. But that's something that you'd absolutely have to keep in mind. So for reading, typing, coding, uh, yeah, any kind of activity under these conditions, I really genuinely would not have any problems whatsoever to use a display like this, is I to include it. However, the problem with this is that the lighting conditions are not really constant because you're relying on the outdoor conditions and they can change. Sure, today is a wonderful day and it works. What happens when it gets cloudy? Well, then the reflections start to battle the content of the screen and then things don't get to be that good. Let's check the yeah, darker content with lots of colors and interactions. Yeah, I think that this all definitely works. Uh, quite nicely. Are the colors pale? Absolutely. They're very, very pale. And I would not want to rely in any way, shape or form on the color accuracy or the judgment of colors on this type of a panel. But can I use it to view color content? So for example, something like this? Yes. I absolutely can. Is it like the best color content and display ever? Absolutely not. I mean, it just is, uh, there, there's plenty of things that are wrong with it. Let's go to 1080p. So it has native resolution, there we go. But is it okay? Sure, the greens are not green. <laughs> like you can definitely see the greens are not green. They're super pale and it does struggle a lot with uh, color interpretation. So this could easily be snow. I mean, this is like super green hills that are basically fully flat, pale green here. So the color interpretation is not good on uh, this panel. This is not an RLCD general type of uh, uh, concern. This is mainly, yeah, with this panel because I've seen other panels and they do uh, yeah, portray colors in a better way. So from that standpoint, EZI 2.0 does struggle with color interpretations and the colors are simply too pale for enjoyable representation of content. But you seem you definitely can uh, view it this way. What I think that the RLCD uh, displays are mainly for is basically just your office type of working, reading and data processing. And for that, unless you're relying on an orange color, as you can see here, uh, for that, I really don't see any huge problems with uh, this panel. And I think that it is able to do these types of tasks really, really well, provided that you are able to A, give it uh, optimal lighting conditions such as these. I mean, genuinely, it's really difficult to give it better lighting conditions than this indoors other than outdoors. Because even if you put it directly in direct light, it's not really gonna be that good because then you're gonna get that silverishness, you're gonna get a lot of reflections and a lot of inconsistency. And that's where the gradient will appear like really highly illuminated area and then the contrast becomes too big between these two. So for my use case scenario, I think that these types of diffuse lighting conditions, but really well diffused lighting conditions are the optimal uh, uh, conditions for an RLCD panels. And in these conditions, if you can give it that, then 
yeah, then it works. And if your work environment is such where you are able to angle it in such a way that it does get the best uh, of the diffuse uh, light in your environment. So those are pretty big asks in reality. And plus you are relying entirely on the yeah weather conditions and the time of day, because you won't be able to do this in the morning. You won't be able to do this in the evening and especially not at night. That's kind of a bit of a problem uh, with these, but I wanted to kind of make a comparison here so that you can see a direct comparison. Um, another thing that I wanted to do as well before kind of finishing all of this, is uh, provide a direct comparison in the same lighting conditions with the yeah, e ink panel and an RLCD panel. And if we have these then as a context, well, then things get to be drastically different, at least for me. So in the context of uh, yeah, our LCD panel versus a traditional LCD panel. Our LCD panel for me in these conditions, optimal conditions for reading, typing, coding wins 100%. However, as soon as I introduce an electrophoretic display or an e-ink display on a Note Max for this matter, uh, in this case, well then, yeah, the, then the favor turns to the e-ink display because you can see that in these lighting conditions, as good as they are, yeah, an ink uh, display simply is more efficient as far as reflectivity goes. It's able to give you uh, more illuminated content and more, I don't know, it's just nicer to read than it is on an RLCD. So for me, again, this is a point where uh, why an RLCD panel simply doesn't stack up as an e-paper display. It is still an LCD display. While it does offer advantages if you give it these types of conditions to a traditional one, and it absolutely does, it still cannot really compare to the comfort and the quality of the illumination and the, yeah, the, the, the nature of the, the content being displayed on a true e-paper display and for reading, editing, document processing, typing, coding. Um, yeah, if I'm to choose between these two, I'm always going to go for the e-paper display in spite of ghosting, the refresh rates, lack of colors and all that kind of stuff for typing and reading and for those tax tasks, it doesn't really matter. For me, it's the visibility, comfort, and the long-term use and consistency of use. And that is something that an e-paper or an electrophoretic display can give you, and an uh, RLCD display really cannot at this point. Um, that's not specifically like an EZI 2.0 uh, fault. If any fault that I can uh, attribute to an EZI 2.0, it would be the color rendering, as I mentioned before. Everything else that I'm talking about here is purely in relation to our LCD displays and technology as, yeah, in general. There we go. That's the uh, point of view video to try and give you as objective as I can a representation of what you can expect to see um, from an RLCD panel and how it compares, again, from that objective point of view through to these traditional alternative display technologies that maybe you know and have already so that you can maybe compare and uh, imagine how an RLCD panel would slot into your real life world conditions. And I wanted to also just uh, provide this type of shot where I've adjusted because as I said, the uh, all of the settings and the aperture and everything is locked. So the previous shots would be a little bit overexposed as the lighting conditions have changed. But now I've just kind of spot metered on the e-ink display so that we can have it as a reference and to see in the exact same lighting conditions how the RLCD or the brightness of the RLCD compares to the brightness of the e-ink panel here and then how it compares to the brightest setting in these lighting conditions of the RLCD if you are interested in that. But mainly it was this comparison here because I, when I reviewed the footage I noticed that uh, yeah there was uh, there were some differences here and that this 
uh, footage would provide an even more objective look on yeah, what the direct comparison is between these two types of displays. All right, so I generally don't know how the footage came out. I saw the preview on my phone and the angle looked fine. So hopefully it's good. I hope that this type of a video and clarification and additional footage allows the users to have an even better understanding and kind of like a, a insight into what it's like to use an RLCD screen in reality. Because these screens are extremely difficult to uh, record and portray as a video on YouTube in a faithful manner, simply because they're completely different than anything else. And that makes them extremely difficult to capture and record, and also extremely important to uh, record and capture and portray as faithfully as possible. So my hope is that this video has brought that type of content and clarity to you guys. I hope that you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.